promise, promise, promise for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me.
this love that I give is gonna be yours until the day that I die. Oh, baby, I'm gonna love you forever, forever and ever, amen. As long as old men sit and talk about the weather, as long as old women sit and talk about old They say time takes its toll on the body Makes the young girl's brown hair turn gray But honey, I don't care I ain't in love with your hair And if it all fell out Well, I'd love you anyway They say time can play tricks on memory Make people forget things they need It's happening to me I've already forgotten Every woman but you Oh darling I'm gonna love you forever Forever and ever Amen As long as old men Sit and talk about the weather As long as old women Sit and talk about old men If you wonder how long I'll be faithful But just listen to how this song ends I'm gonna love you forever and ever Forever and ever, amen I'm gonna love you forever and ever Forever and ever Good afternoon. My name's Andrew. On behalf of the family and the Salvation Army, I welcome you to, not to a funeral, but to a celebration of life of Shirley. We're gathered here to pay tribute to her, to honour her, um, to share about her, and to say goodbye. These times are always uh, really poignant. They're times where we reflect on our own life and our own mortality too. And so sometimes that can be sad and sometimes we can have joy uh, so whatever you're feeling this morning just know that um, it's okay and uh, we'll get through this together i was asked earlier this week um, what does it mean to for someone to have a faith what is the benefits of having a faith in god and we know shirley did and uh, i had to scratch my head for a bit uh, and then came up with a, i i think i think that people who have a faith in God, have a hope which doesn't die, have a hope which goes on. And it's something that we anchor ourselves to. And we know Shirley had that faith. And we're going to sing one of her favourite hymns now, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. It talks exactly about this hope that we have to rest in God. I invite you, if you can, to stand. If you don't want to, that's fine. Um, and uh, the words will be up on the screen and we'll sing this song together. Thank you.
have a seat. Let us pray. Our great God who watches over all life, we give you thanks for the life of Shirley. We give you thanks that she has touched so many people and been so many places and done so many things. And we pray this time together would be a tribute to her life and a tribute to her memory. Be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask Sarah if you would like to come and read from John 14 verses 1 to 4. Chapter 14, John, verses 1 to 4. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I am going. Marion's going to come and read a poem called Peace Within the Garden. Thank you, Marion. Peace Within a Garden. There's peace within a garden, a peace so deep and calm that when the heart is troubled, it's like a soothing balm. There's life within a garden, a life that still goes on, filling empty spaces when older plants are gone. There's a glory in the garden at every time of year. You only have to stop a while to fill the heart with cheer. So ever tend your garden, its beauty to increase, for in it you'll find comfort and in it you'll find peace. Thank you, Marion. Marion's a good friend of Shirley from the core. And we know that Shirley loved a garden uh, so very touching. Thank you. Our God, thank you for being the source and pe of peace and strength as we say farewell to Shirley. Thank you for your promise of comfort and support in the days ahead. Remind us again that you are with us and near to us. God bless all who mourn and help them. Remember the love and goodness of Shirley's life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Beautiful. Along with family, we know we're joined uh, from people from the Bowls Club and uh, from dancing and from the Salvation Army and I'm sure there's plenty of others uh, that I haven't uh, covered so it's good to see you. You're all part of Shirley's life. A very big part, of course, of Shirley's life was her family. And uh, we're going to hear now some tributes from Simone. And then uh, Casey, Tane and Kay are going to come. And then I'm going to read something from Shawnee, who obviously being in Canada can't be here today, but she is watching on the live stream. So Simone, would you like to come, please? I feel very privileged for the time that I've had with my grant. And a lot of other people I know haven't been as privileged as I am with the years. And there are so many great memories of grant. Right from childhood, she was always in the garden and spinning wool, knitting beautiful creations and cooking up a storm in the kitchen. So many sweet treats. My grand was always on the go. She had a love for life. And in her younger years, she would be at the markets through the morning and then dancing in the night. She could move. And she had so much fun. And she was so full of life and laughter. Her love of animals was so endearing and something that has come, carried on with me. Um, 
I'm happy that I have things of Gran that are within me that will stay with me forever and are also passed on to my children and possibly our later generations in time. My Gran is such an inspiration to me. Her dedication, determination and independence. She's truly a woman that I have looked up to and I am proud to call my own. No matter how long between visits, she'd always welcome me with her smile and put the kettle on and grab the jar of biscuits. Granny, you're so beautiful, inside and out. I love you so much. I will always miss you. You will always be with me in my heart. Thank you, Simone. Okay, this is probably one of the most important things and the hardest things I've ever been asked to do. Grandmother, mum, sister, auntie, cousin, what an amazing woman. Shirley made an impact on a lot of people, especially me. Helped raise me with my mother, a kid, having a kid. My mum was 14 at the time. Apparently there was a lot of talk about whether she, mum, would be keeping me, but Gran wouldn't have that. Thanks to that, I got a really mean foxtrot. <laughs> Which takes me on to ballroom dancing, where I spent most of my childhood, Saturday nights, going to the local hall around Burnie, which I really liked. The supper consisted of lots of yummy cakes. And at the end of the night, I was allowed to stay up after 12 a.m. <laughs> oh yeah, and Gran telling Pop off for kissing the ladies on the cheek on the way home. <laughs> she taught me a lot. Knitting, spinning, which consisted of watching movies like The Blue Lagoon out in the shed with the fire going. She bought me my first guitar. Cooking for the market, hundreds of cream cakes, jelly cakes, sometimes even selling a homespun jumper. Which takes me on to something that I'm still fond of today, fishing. Down at the Stanley Wharf, rain, hard, which was heaps of fun because I must mention the Gran and Pop were really competitive. Form took over the hive and I had needles for months, weeks, even years. Thanks, Gran, for raising me and teaching me right from wrong. So before I moved into my first house, when I was 23, once or twice, I may, may have come home early in the morning, trying not to get woken up trying not to wake up Gran and Pop, but she had a cockatoo named Joe, <laughs> which he was like an alarm on his own. He would screech like the gate, knock on the door, and he'd talk just like Gran, which was pretty daunting when I was trying not to get caught. My Gran was a very religious, strong lady with the Salvation Army, and now she's in God's hands. Thank you. Three cheers for Gran. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Thank you. I remember being a young girl at 14 when the first time I felt so close to my mum. The feeling of, wow, you're unreal. And mum became my best friend. And I still, even though I continue to disappoint, she just continued to support me with unconditional love. And I thank her from the bottom of my heart for not giving up on me and making me the person I am today. I'm so lucky to have been blessed to call you my mum. And I'm going to love you forever and ever, ever and ever. Amen. They were the last words my mum heard, and so true they were for me, from me.
can't write how much she meant to me in words. I can only express how much love I have for her by reflecting <laughs> on memories. Memories like the smell of the wheat pack warming my sheets before she tucked me into bed. When she, read me, when she used to read me chapters of the Bible, I'd lay my head nearly down to fall asleep and she used to say, for now I lay myself down to sleep. I pray to dear Lord my soul to keep. Guide me safely through the night and wake me with the morning light. Amen. This day I was at my nana's with my mum and it came up in conversation that I was late um, for my monthlies. And didn't they go all clucky starting to say, um, saying that I'm, I'm glowing? And then Nan tells me the old myth of the gold ring and the string. The myth is, <laughs> is when the ring it goes around in a circle if you're having a girl and it goes, straight, it goes in a straight line if you're having a boy. Well, Nan puts the, the, the ring on the string and dangles it over my belly. It started, it started spinning around widely in a circle. I was quite shocked, so I took a pregnancy that I took a pregnancy test when I got home, and fair enough, I was pregnant. Nine months later, Nana was sitting in my delivery room, knitting a jumper for our beautiful little girl Soraya, while I was in labour. Also, Nana and the ring were right about my little boy Waylon. The ring told me before I even tested positive. I believe in you, Nana, and I believe that you are the most strongest, dedicated, determined, beautiful woman I've ever met. With your pride for your garden, your home, your family, your marriage, your religion and the art that you always was creating. I have a deep love for what she passed down to me. She taught me to crochet when I was about 14 and by 18 it became my medicine. I was struggling with mental health issues and crocheting really became my safe space. And that means so much to me. My dream is to have my own business and sell and so what I make her markets and I will cherish you for the rest of my life and you inspire me to practice simplicity, sorry I can't say that word, simplicity, mum, <laughs> simplicity, to create, to be gentle, to be determined. This generation it ain't making them as strong and as unmotivated and as loving as my nana is. I want to try to make your famous Christmas biscuits, the ones that I ate too many of. You gave me your first spinning wheel and I swear, Nan, I will get the drift on how it spins. You watch me and I hope you are watching me because you are with, you're going to be with me for the rest of my life and I love you so much. Thanks, Simone and Casey and Kayleen and Tane. I'm going to read now uh, from a, a tribute from Shawnee who's uh, hopefully watching on the live stream. This has been hard to write. Gran has always been a part of my story. Some of the, my earliest memories were gardening with her in the backyard of her townhouse. She showed me the parsley and mint and said I could eat them raw. For some reason as a child I took particular liking to the parsley and would walk around Gran's house with handfuls of parsley, picking off the leaves and eating them raw. Parsley will always remind me of my time at Gran's house. As a kid I loved Gran's house. I loved her pet cocky and if I jumped up and down in front of his cage, he would start to shriek up and, and jump up and down, which I found so funny. Gran would remind me the neighbours may not appreciate a shrieking cocky. And in the mornings I would hear cocky asking Gran for toast and she would make it for him just as he liked it. I think I got my love of animals from Gran. I love visiting, seeing the chickens and rabbits and birds. If I was lucky, we would take some of the friendlier cockatiels and budgies out and they would sit on my finger. Gran had a way with animals, raising wildlife, even hatching chickens in her own bed. It was something that I always appreciated about her. As a child, market days were my favourite days because if I was really lucky, we would get sent home with some of her leftover baked goodies. Cream-filled biscuits were my favourite. Another favourite memory was bringing her raw wool from our pet sheep and watching her spin it on her spinning wheel. Seeing her take handfuls of this fleece and spin it into wool was mesmerising to watch. I loved her knitting too. When I was 16 and our pet sheep passed, she made me a teddy complete with a little bit of fluffy fleece on his head. I have taken that teddy to every place I have travelled to. That teddy lived in Nepal with me and now sits on a shelf here in Canada. It was always so special to me. I loved watching Gran knit 
and her knitting was always so special to me. When I got married, Gran knit us a beautiful quilt. My daughter now has a beautiful yellow sweater from her that I will treasure forever. Gran is an artisan. Watching her make beautiful things out of fleece from scratch was so inspiring. She taught me how to knit, and for a while we would sit chatting on the armchairs knitting. She would patiently fix my mistakes over and over again. I will always cherish these memories, eating licorice all sorts, which were always in supply, making poorly do tricks for snack smackos, drinking Milo, watching Grand Knit. These memories hold so much warmth for me. The first vehicle I drove came from her. Christmas lunches at her house were my favourite. Fishing trips to the Stanley Wharf were always better when she was with us. Picking fresh raspberries from her greenhouse and home-cooked dinners. I feel like Gran has a gift of being present, of living in the moment. These are the memories that I will cherish the most. It was the small moments that have made a lasting difference in my life. I will miss you, Gran, until we meet again, Shawnee. Some beautiful tributes to Shirley's life. And it gives you a picture of the kind of person Shirley was. We're going to now watch a uh, photo presentation of some photos which kind of depict different stages of Shirley's life. Some of you may recognise them and others may be new to you, but I hope you enjoy it as we listen uh, and watch. Thank you. My mother and father loved to dance was in their soul It kept them young Though the years rolled on Their song never grew old I felt the world fall silent When I heard they passed away But then from out of nowhere A song began Are you dancing in heaven tonight? Holding each other so tight Just like you did all those magic nights before Moving to the rhythm of love And though I'm gonna miss you so much I know you'll be all you're dancing in heaven tonight Now there's a place inside my heart Where the music never ends And any time the teardrops start Last through all eternity Are you dancing in heaven Tonight Holding each other So tight Just like you did All those magic nights before Moving to the rhythm Of love And though I'm gonna so much, I know you'll be alright Cause you're dancing in heaven tonight I know you're dancing in heaven tonight Holding each other so tight Stepping in time Across the starlit floor Moving to the of love and though I'm gonna miss you so much I know you'll be alright cause you're 
Cause you're dancing in heaven to the family for putting that together for us all. It's always a privilege to be asked to lead, not a funeral, I said, a celebration of life for someone and to maybe offer some final thoughts uh, to take home with us and cherish. And if you look up on the screen, you'll see in loving memory in Shirley's name and then just below that you'll see two dates. The first is the day she was born and then there's a dash and then the last is the day she went to heaven. And we often focus on that last one, especially in times of celebration of life, but what if we focus on the dash? See, in that dash is hours and hours and hours of bowling and dancing and fishing, thousands and thousands of conversations with people, many of you here, certainly the family. It's those small moments that will be cherished. It's the love she showed her pets, her love for the great outdoors. It's for all the little things that made Shirley, Shirley. And so often our dash comes and we find before long that we're nearing the end of our dash. And the question is, how are we living it? And I think if, I, and I know a little bit about Shirley, I had some conversations with her. She was a hard worker. She packed a lot into that dash, into that life. And I think if there was anything that she would possibly say to all her family and friends here gathered is, what are you doing with your dash? Are you living it to the full? Are you packing as much in as you can? Are you enjoying life and all that life has to offer? I know Shirley did. She enjoyed what life had to offer. And I hope that you would think about that yourself. Are you living your life to any great purpose? Are you spending your time here well? And soon we'll all get together in heaven and we'll see Shirley again. But for now, she's gone ahead of us a little bit. But she would want us to live our lives to the full. And so, she no longer needs her songbook because she's singing the tunes of heaven. She no longer needs her body because she's gained one which isn't hurt and broken and suffering but is perfect. She no longer needs her Bible because she is now face to face with the author of life. And we're about to say goodbye. And we trust her into God's hands knowing that with hope we will see her again. Would you stand, everyone?